Everybody knows that cell towers connect your phone to the internet, but how? How does the cell tower actually talk to your phone? How does your phone talk to the cell tower? How expensive is fiber and which animals mess with microwave towers? We'll tell you all of that in this video, including why satellites are often the cheapest way to connect your phone to the internet. A cell network is the infrastructure that allows your phone to connect to a greater network. It used to be done by people routing calls via patch cables. This is where the term operator comes from. Over time, it went analog. Then texting or SMS came out, allowing short messages, which were character limited, to be sent. Now, we're living in the internet age, where we have voice over IP and Wi-Fi messaging. In order for a phone to connect you with other phones or the internet, it needs to wirelessly connect to a tower, a piece of physical infrastructure that is broadcasting those signals and receiving them when the phone sends them back. Cell towers connect your phone using electromagnetic waves, which operate at specific frequencies that we call the spectrum. It's a symphony of frequencies, with each device hitting just the right electromagnetic note to send and receive your data. In total, a single tower can support a couple thousand people. That's the magic of a cell network. You need to determine how many towers do we need in order to connect this amount of people. Figuring how much bandwidth and connectivity you need on any given network is an important and complicated task. Populations change, sometimes more capacity is needed, and it can be hard to predict what's needed for a traditional cell network. One tower, if it's operating at two and a half gigahertz, might only have a range of a couple kilometers. So if you wanted to connect a country like Nigeria, which is close to one million kilometers, you'd need a lot of towers. That's just the bare bones. If you want to have better signal, you're going to need more towers that are more tightly packed. As you get further away from the tower, your signal is going to be worse. Cell towers themselves don't just generate the internet. The internet is a connection between different computers and servers all across the world. The cell tower is a wireless connection point to that broader network. And what connects the cell towers to the internet is what we refer to as backhaul. So backhaul is the final mile that connects the remote sites or cell towers to the main trunk of the internet, which we call the backbone, which is a connection of fiber lines that drive traffic throughout the world. Traditionally, this was done via copper lines, but those move signals very slowly, and when the tech became available, we started to do it with fiber. Fiber is basically glass wrapped with other glass. It's bouncing optical signals, literally lasers, down the line. It costs over $30,000 to build one mile of fiber. Even today in the United States, only one third of all cell towers are connected with fiber. So that raises the question, what do we do when we can't reach a tower with fiber? There have been many technologies over the past few years to do this, but point-to-point -point microwave has been the most common. These microwaves are notoriously not resistant. You have to perfectly align one dish to the other, and slight changes like weather can cause problems. There's literally been reports of monkeys messing with microwave towers and goofing around and pointing them the wrong way. But there's an alternative. We can do cellular backhaul with satellite connectivity. Instead of installing costly fiber lines or complex point-to-point -point arrays, you can point one dish to the sky and receive a strong connection to the internet. Here's how it works. That satellite will beam down connectivity over one specific point, the gateway, which is the backhaul line to the internet, but then also a broad coverage area, basically like a flashlight shining down on the earth. One beam can use different high-frequency waves to transmit extremely high amounts of data down to an entire broad area. Any tower that is within the range of that beam can see the satellite and can use the satellite as their backhaul link. It's a little mind boggling that building, launching and operating something in space is cheaper and easier than running cables or setting up a ton of dishes, but it is. It's especially easy to get connected to satellites in geostationary orbit. All that happens is a technician goes to the tower, sets up the dish one time to a fixed point in geostationary orbit, and then that backhaul connection can work. People can get data, they can make calls, they can send text messages through that cell tower as if it was connected via fiber. One of the great things about satellite backhaul is how resilient it is and how quickly it can be set up in the event of a natural disaster or catastrophe. Trees, debris, and wind can't disrupt our satellite connection the way it can with fiber lines and point-to-point -point systems. It's also easy to restore connection after calamity. Just point the dish up and you're connected with the help you need. Soon, we'll be launching a satellite for the Philippines, a place that unfortunately experiences over 20 typhoons a year. And our connectivity is gonna allow people to help get back online as quickly as possible during a natural disaster. Another benefit to satellite backhaul is the ability to easily add surge capacity. This is something Astronis has a unique advantage with. Our SDR allows us to dynamically adjust bandwidth and power across different beams exactly when and where we need it. Our satellites are dedicated to individual geographies, so we can have one or more satellites that are focused on one area of interest. This is why Astronus has been able to provide cell backhaul for up to 50% less than traditional solutions. If you spend less money deploying and maintaining infrastructure, you can pass on those savings. 
This is a great choice for lots of places that are very hard to connect, whether it's mountainous terrain like Peru or a bunch of islands like the Philippines, or whether there's deserts and mountains combined like in Mexico. So Astronom's microgeo satellites are a perfect solution for cell backhaul. You have one satellite, you have 500 towers, and you have 2 million people that are connected to the internet.